Hello and welcome to the fifth episode of Jamaica Live at Five, the best place to get your top five news stories for the week. I'm Javon. And I'm Daniel. So life is back in full swing. School has begun, people start go to work. I'm feeling blessed and kind of happy so far. So how are you feeling? You know who must feel blessed? <laughs> the person, Melissa Elliot, that won yes, 10k congrats, from yeah. Holiday Hideaway last week. As she must feel blessed. Yeah, and stay tuned to the end of the episode to see if you have won this week grand prize of $15,000. $15, so, you want to start us off with this week's story, Zanil? Not really, but you know, <laughs> I get a blight. So, at number five, we have the Human Resource Management Association of Jamaica mm -hmm. urging the companies under its umbrella to implement social media yeah. policies for its employees. And this was after DPP Paula Llewellyn sent out a memorandum to her staff saying that a social media policy is forthcoming. Mm -hmm. And this was after the big controversy <laughs> that Adley Duncan yeah. did on Twitter where he shared the details, the like full details. full details of his home invasion. Mm -hmm. He said that he was at home doing what single people do. I'm single, I don't know what single people do. <laughs> but he said he was doing something that single people do at home when he heard someone in his house yeah. and he hurried off the bed, got rushed dressed, out, yeah. rushed out, called the police. He realized that his iPad was stolen. Mm -hmm. He was outside talking to neighbors and I just relaying the story to them but forgetting that evidence of his self-pressure was on his stomach local media they got the story yeah. they turned it into a big thing and like the internet was saying why why sensationalize it like it shouldn't even have mm -hmm. made the news well, that's a lot to take it out of my but I think every week we come and talk about something is a wake up call, but I think this one is this one is fitting because it's a wake up call to all the major corporations out there that they need to implement proper social media usage for all their employees. Because a professional office that should be taken seriously, like the DPP, can be dampened by stories like yes. these. So I feel that major corporations should sensitize their workers on how to use their social media effectively. And effectively. DPP Paula Llewellyn was saying that she does not use social media yeah. because of the office that she holds and while she cannot say to her employees do not use social media yeah. because they're in this profession she has to curb the usage or curb yeah. what they put on social media because it is embarrassing yeah to and the it's office. hard as as horrifying as it sounds social media do not separate your personal life from your professional life so it can hurt you and your future endeavors so use your social media properly quickly though mm -hmm. nobody is actually paying attention to the seriousness of the matter that the deputy DPP yeah it was robbed got burglarized and they stole like an ipod so because he because he's a public figure or mm -hmm. because of the details of the story like should it be brushed to the side yeah. because this is someone with a public office like he goes to court he puts people behind bars and his house got burglarized like mm -hmm. it could have been something much more serious, serious. yeah i agree and one ipad no why you see one ipad <laughs> information <Daniel>? Never know. <laughs> Now on to a story that should be posted on all social media platforms taking the number 4 spot this week a massive dengue outbreak in Jamaica it, is, it has swept the nation Daniel 81 persons reported dead from this mosquito borne disease 9 year old Nelia died from this disease so what do you think about that? Um, it is sad mm -hmm. but I must compliment the government yeah. and Christopher Tufton for the measures that they have put in place to yeah. mitigate the spread. Yeah, we have to laud the government for the work they're doing. They just implemented a one billion dollar three day campaign that should that should clean up the areas to fourteen hundred vector vector workers, workers to clean up the sites and they have the other things that are going on like the public education the increase fogging so we can mitigate the people the mosquitoes yeah. wanted dead not, not alive, alive. <laughs> and at number three we have the u.s secretary of state mike yeah. pompeo expected to pay a visit a gleaner source revealed yeah. and this is supposed to he he should be arriving around the 21st of January. Yeah, he is expected to talk about the recent flare up in Middle East, what it means for Caribbean countries and Jamaica on a whole. But the US Embassy has not confirmed his visit, so let's see. 
um, you know, maybe Pompey just to the excitement of it, the excitement and the festivities. <laughs> and him say I'm coming here and then people just feel like it's an official visit. Speaking of ex excitement, Daniel, at number two this week, Jamaica has been named the top cruise port destination for the year 2020 and the leading travel spot for the year 2019. I'm excited about this news and I'm extremely happy because it speaks to our developments, the developments happening around the cities, Kingston and Montego Bay is an asset to our tourism sector and it is building our economy. You know, as according to Chetang's so big, big up, up, big up yourself. <laughs> but no, I am also very proud of this. Yeah. You know, they are marketing the yeah. hell out of Jamaica, and everybody wants to be yeah, here. Yeah, and it has surpassed countries like Mauritius, Seychelles, the Bahamas, Dubai, Dubai Miami. Miami. Top travel we spot. are one with yeah. things. And it's a testament to the celebrities that are here now: Lori Harvey, Tiana Taylor, and her future. husband. Future. Come look for me. Yeah. Um, Ryan Des. Destiny, these everybody big names, Jordan everybody Woods, all that, everybody. So Jamaica is on a global stage, and I'm I'm loving what I see. Love it. We have to go vacation. We live where you vacation. Yeah. <laughs> and after all that excitement and Jamaica taking the top travel spot, it is really sad to talk about the number one story for this week. And at number one, we have the numerous gender-based violence that has been mm -hmm. happening since the start of the year. We have the one in Portmore on Sunday where the man, his, they had an argument. Yeah. He left, she left when he came back. When she came back, he shot her. Apparently, allegedly, he chopped her up. He, and then mm. he put the evidence on his WhatsApp status. People in the community said that they heard him saying he's going to kill her when she come back. And then um, less than 24 hours after that in St. Elizabeth you have another man his girlfriend left him when moved back into her parents house he broke into the house kick out wind and all these things go in the house go in them kitchen take up them knife and cut her throat it, like her parents yeah. were there they had to go and discover her and that was just after 24 hours. Danielle and we spoke about the one that happened on New Year's Eve in Manchester and the St. Thomas, St. Thomas, this is becoming a common occurrence and even though it has caused persons to step up like Crystal Tomlinson and Olivia Babsa Grange, we have to take it more serious and into regular discourse. Men, we have to stop this oh, violence against women. Oh, just need to stop, kill the woman then. Yeah. And police, it's sad to talk about the police response to domestic violence. We, we can just say so much and no more. Let's ask, let's ask, <laughs> let's ask the audience. Do you think the police is effective in response to domestic violence, domestic violence acts? Or do we as a country take domestic violence serious? Because the neighbors of the Portmore, the incident in Portmore, they were saying that they didn't want to call the police because it's just a threat and the police is not going to show up. But yeah. we are, we women, we are dying and we need to do something more. You have the campaign going around with the little picture, stop domestic violence against women and somebody take it or turn it in a joke board, yeah. tap tech man for fool and stop the this and stop the all of them someday. How is that how we even if the lady is taking his money she's taking him for a fool or whatever it is how is that the equivalent of taking someone's life the only solution to this the only solution to stop violence against women is to stop killing them My, th this is what i have to say even if she is uh, Taking taking a man's money, she had taken for fool or idiot. If you wanted returns on your investment, sir, you should have contacted a traditional banking institution. <laughs> when you invest into a woman, you you are not guaranteed any returns. She's you not your property. Yes, <laughs> you never sign a contract. Yeah. When you carry your money go down on NCB, them give you a paper for sign, so you gonna get X returns. When you carry your money go over a lady yard, she not getting <laughs> a paper the more she gets like a dinner. And some drinks. Yeah, we just we just have to stop. So 
that concludes this episode of Jamaica Live at 5. And just to run a recap of the top 5 stories for this week at number 5. The Human Resource Management Association of Jamaica pushes for social media policy implementation. Number 4. The government spends $1 billion to mitigate dengue. At number 3. The US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is visiting Jamaica next week. Number 2. Jamaica is the top leading tourist destination for 2019 and 2020. 20. And at number one, the numerous gender based killings that has been happening since the start of the year. So, those were your top five stories for the week. And now it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for to see if you have won $15,000. Holiday a, Hideaway, come back yeah. again. I go no money for these groceries. So, Holiday Hideaway for all your comfortable and affordable stays in Ochi. So, when it's Ochi weekend, you know you can go to Holiday Hideaway and use Jamaica Live to get your discount. Yep, so, tell us, <laughs> Daniel and Javon Senior. So, now it's time to announce our winner. Let's look at the raffle. <laughs> Yeah, and the winner is. You know, say Rata Tekla. Kiana Sina. Kiana Sina. Not Kiana Sina then. Yeah, Kiana. <laughs> Kiana Sina. Congratulations, Kiana Sina, for winning our 90 days of January grocery giveaway. So stay near your phone. We're going to call you right now. Make sure she answers now. Hello, Hello. Hello Kiana, you have just won $15,000 from Jamaica Live and Holiday Hideaway to buy yourself some groceries for the January period. How are you feeling? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Mama, you won. You won 15k from Holiday Hideaway and Jamaica. Okay, thank Congratulations you so again. Thanks a lot. And enjoy your January. You as well. Yeah, man. <laughs> So congratulations Kiana and join next week we are giving $15,000 again. $15,000? Something <laughs> wrong with you, we're giving away 20 k next we, yeah, we week. Yeah, we just said that, we just said that. We just <laughs> So, We're giving away twenty thousand dollars next week, and jo from Jamaica Live on Holiday Hideaway. Let me tell us something. You see them people that own a Holiday Hideaway, them <laughs> love them, you know. Five k, ten grand, fifteen, 15 no. no, twenty. So stay tuned to our social media platforms to see how you could be our next winner. Twenty thousand dollars, and go on, subscribe, comment, share, like our YouTube page and just head on over to our other socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and follow us at Jamaica Live News. I'm Javon. And I'm Danielle. Jamaica Live, your, your cultural, cultural bridge. bridge.